is your Jesus too small? As we come to Barney Daily Devotionals today, we see that the disciples hadn't quite comprehended exactly who this was that they had given their lives and given their careers for to follow. They didn't understand his power. They didn't understand who he was and that they were to be in awe of him. But by the end of this passage, everything they have considered about Jesus has been blown away. Let's have a look. We're in Luke chapter 8 and we're in verse 22. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out as they sailed. He fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? he asked his disciples. In fear and amazement they asked one another, Who is this? He even commands the wind and the water and they obey him. I don't know if you've ever been out in a boat or in a yacht or even on a deep sea vessel or cruise line and a storm has come over. It's a frightening experience. I've been out kayak fishing a few times and uh, I've been out on a fishing boat when a storm has started a brew and on the fishing boat the captain said we've got to go and there's no kind of question about it and the wind started hitting and why oh, it was a scary thing as the boat's tipping it felt almost like 45 degrees each way and you're being thrown about but we made it in safe as you can see i'm here now but it's a scary experience and here we are with some experienced fishermen and some tax collectors and others who are jesus disciples on this boat setting out for the other side of the lake and jesus is asleep in the back of the boat the storm comes up and they know storms and they know this is a scaring one and they are frightened for their life they fear that they are going to die and so they wake jesus and what does he do he gets up and just says no he rebukes the wind and the waves and they stop and it is this a magic moment i guess you could say wow you'd be rejoicing and be glad because Imagine being in that situation and it went dead flat. You, would you be shouting for joy? Uh, would you be dancing up and down? Would you be high-fiving each other or Jesus? No, that's not what they do. They are even more afraid in fear and amazement. They ask one another, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. It's a frightening experience that they have. They were afraid before, afraid for their lives. But now there is someone even scarier than that which would bring death to them standing in their presence or who, in whose presence they are standing. And they are shocked. They are in awe. They are blown away by this. I mean, it's, it's, it's not a fear that they are presently in danger and about to die, but there is a new fear. Their, their mind has been blown about Jesus. Because who is it? that can control the wind in the waves. Who can do that? Some of the uh, interesting, uh, I call them sermons I've heard recently, have suggested that this is man in his natural state, that Jesus isn't God doing this. Jesus is how Adam and Eve and we were all supposed to be. And if we just have enough faith, we can do just as Jesus did here. We can control the elements. We can make the world revolve around this. And so the, they, they would say that the disciples here have, have misunderstood their place and they've asked the wrong questions. No, they shouldn't be asking, who is this that commands them in the ways? They, they should be asking, how can we do that too? But that smacks a lot of what Simon Magus does in the book of Acts, who is rebuked and condemned uh, because he wants to be able to perform the great miracles that the apostles are doing. So that is not the question. The disciples are asking the right question. Who is this? Who is this that the wind and the waves, the storms that could threaten and kill life, obey him? Who could it be? Well, there's only one that he could be. The Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He made the storms, he made the sea, he made everything that's in it in the beginning. I was reading Psalm 93 uh, for myself a little earlier today and it says this, The Lord reigns. 
He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and is armed with strength. How much strength, how strong is the Lord? The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Your throne, though God, was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, O Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. But mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days, O Lord. Who is it that is stronger than the breakers? Who is it that can calm the sea? God himself. They're coming to this dawning realisation. Well, they're at least opening the question of how could anyone possibly do this? This is stuff that's reserved for God himself. No wonder they are in afraid and in amazement by the end of it because they are standing in the presence of one far greater than They have asked exactly the right question. Who is this man? Who's Jesus when you think of him? A lot of us, we think of him as caring and compassion. Uh, We don't think of him uh, in these kind of terms as the one who could destroy the elements or could just command them and they, they take their place in front of him. We don't think of him often as the judge, the one to whom all must give account, who can condemn us. Uh, for all eternity or save us for all eternity but he is wonderful and he is terrifying in his power but he uses that power for our good and it is wonderful and we should be in fear as well as in amazement of him he's not like our best friend in the sense that we go you know and play board games together and go fishing together and hang out no he is someone stupendously powerful in whom we should be in total awe in our lives. We should fear God. It is right to fear him in the sense not of cowering that he's going to destroy us, especially now our sins have been forgiven through the work of Jesus. But uh, is right. Do you stand in awe of this one, of this king, this master, the one you follow? If you're not one of his followers yet, have you come to the point where you're starting to see this is no ordinary man he is someone way beyond us he is someone with the power of god who can condemn who can lift up who can subdue the elements let me pray father we thank you for this challenge this morning in your gospel to be in awe of the lord jesus christ We pray that we would not be afraid of this world and all it can bring against us, that we wouldn't fear for our lives in the face of COVID or anything else, but more we would be in fear of you, knowing that you hold our lives in your hand. You who who, uh, bring us good things in life and who control everything around us, we thank you for your power and might. Help us to live in awe of you each day, to remember who we are, that we are your creatures, that we are your children. We thank you for your great mercy that you use your power to exercise for our salvation. And thank you the Lord Jesus has defeated even death in his power. Help us to put our lives in your hands and to stand in awe of you each day. Amen. Well, God bless everyone. See you again tomorrow.